Hello, this is Dr. Esmacher, and today we are going to move right on into the 1960s and specifically talk about two presidents whose monograms give the name to our session today, JFK and LBJ. So we're going to talk about the presidencies of John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Baines Johnson, talk a little bit about their domestic and foreign policy. We're going to cover a little bit more of the civil rights movement as it shifts into the early 1960s. And then <clears throat> in the next couple of sessions, we'll talk a little bit more about the social movements of the 1960s. So in 1960, the Republican Party decides to nominate as their presidential candidate Richard Nixon, who had served uh, for the past two terms as Joy D. Eisenhower's vice president. And Nixon's opponent in the election was a bit of an unconventional pick from the Democratic Party, a young senator from Massachusetts named John F. Kennedy. Now, it wasn't just Kennedy's relative age that made him an unconventional pick. Uh, he, in some ways, was a little more conventional, like many politicians running during this time period. He had also served uh, during World War II in the Navy. What made Kennedy an unusual pick was the fact that he was from a very prominent Irish Catholic family in Massachusetts. The Democratic Party had previously only ever nominated Catholic once, exactly once, in the election of 1928, Alfred Smith. So Kennedy becomes only the second Catholic nominee for president in U.S. history. And Kennedy's religion did play a role in the election of 1960. In particular, this long-standing anti-Catholicism in American culture and politics does come up in the 1960 presidential race. Uh, since the 1800s, with the arrival in larger numbers of Catholic immigrants from places like Ireland and Germany in the mid-1800s, there had long been a critique against Catholics by white American Protestants, that they would not be sufficiently good American citizens because they would always have divided loyalties between the United States and the Pope, who ran the Catholic Church. So Kennedy is going to face some of this, which had plagued uh, Catholic immigrants and Catholic politicians for decades at this point. But Kennedy does do a pretty good job to pivot and focus his campaign instead on the Cold War. Particularly, he believed that the United States uh, was falling behind when it came to the space race and weaponry, pointing to the Soviet launch of the first successful satellite Sputnik and increased intercontinental ballistic missile testing. And to balance out Kennedy's relative youth and his Catholicness, the Democratic Party chose as his running mate, his vice presidential candidate, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was older than Kennedy. Uh, he was then the Senate Majority Leader from Texas, and so he was meant as an appeal uh, to people living in the South who were a little reluctant to vote for this guy from Massachusetts, who not only spoke with a very strong Boston accent, but also was, again, Catholic. Now, television plays an interesting role in this 1960 election because this is the first time we see televised presidential debates. Prior to this, presidential debates, since radio became popular, have been conducted via radio so people could tune in from their homes and listen to the presidential debates. And there are still radio debates in this cycle, but a very interesting thing happens. When researchers ask people who watch the debate versus people who listen to the debate who they felt had won the presidential debate, the results were different depending upon what format they engaged with the debate. Viewers of the radio de debates declared Nixon the winner, whereas viewers of the television debate declared Kennedy the overwhelming winner. 
So why the difference? Partly because Kennedy was made for television. He's made for film. He's relatively uh, good looking in comparison to Nixon. Kennedy seemed much more calm, cool, collected, charismatic, whereas Nixon kind of came across as a sweaty, anxious mess on television. So when viewers are focusing on the substance of the the words, right, those who are tuning in via radio, they found Nixon more compelling. But when they're focusing on the overall package, not just the words, but the visual presentation, then viewers increasingly chose Kennedy. So this is going to usher in, uh, in the age of politics, this notion that image is everything, right? That it's not just what you say or the ideas you have, but also the image you project is going to be increasingly important. Nevertheless, the election was fairly tight, with Kennedy only winning the popular vote by 120,000 votes. So Kennedy becomes one of the youngest presidents ever elected, and he also becomes America's first and thus far only Catholic president. Kennedy's time in office, which was cut short when he was assassinated in November 1963, was defined mostly by foreign policy, which we'll talk about in more detail in a second. Uh, he is also known, at least for the latter part of his time in office, for paying attention to the civil rights movement, although many presidential scholars will criticize Kennedy for not jumping on the civil rights bandwagon a little quicker. <coughs> and if Kennedy's time in office is largely dominated by foreign policy and a series of crises, as we'll talk about, uh, and he is regularly dinged for his domestic policies or lack of quick attention to important movements like the civil rights movement, why do we treat Kennedy as an icon, a man who was really only president for less than three years? Partly, Kennedy is treated as an icon because of his importance as a symbol. Think about the transition in the White House. You had from 1952 to 1960, Dwight D. Eisenhower, right? Older, kind of everybody's grandpa, like his specialty was you know, military experience and expertise. And he very much represented the older generation. Now you have Kennedy coming in. He's far younger. He's far more glamorous. He is not talking about the past, but he very much focuses in his campaign and his speeches on the future. And so for many Americans, Kennedy was a symbol of youth and vitality. And so it wasn't just Kennedy, the individual or Kennedy, the politician that Kennedy represented for them what they hoped was a, a symbolic change more towards focusing on the future, more towards passing the baton, if you will, uh, to a younger generation of politicians as we moved into the 1960s. <clears throat> 